Welcome to the demonstration on data masking and encryption in FieldShield. The IRI FieldShield is a powerful program used for protecting sensitive data and personally identifying information PII, at the field level. This can be done with multiple techniques in one pass through the data. Among those techniques are encryption and masking. Encryption encodes data so that only those who are authorized can read the data. The plain text data is encrypted using an encryption algorithm and that data can only be read when the data is decrypted. Masking hides data or pieces of data so that the data is no longer uniquely recognizable. Once a piece of data is masked, it cannot be returned to its original form. This demo will use the IRI Workbench to create a FieldShield job script in the FieldShield language that uses encryption and masking techniques to protect various fields that are extracted from the table scott.patient underscore record 3 in an Oracle database. Then Workbench can run the script. Before starting, be sure to either make or highlight the project where you want your work to be saved. Our project is field shield underscore mask underscore encrypt. Click on the arrow next to the field shield icon on the toolbar. Select New Protection Job. In the Job Specification file window, type in fs underscore encrypt underscore mask and Workbench will add the .fcl to the script name. Be sure that the Create Script radio button is selected. Click Next to go to the Data Sources window. On the right, select Add Data Source. This takes you to the Data Source window. Select the ODBC radio button. Click on the ODBC Browse button to go to the ODBC Table Selection window. In the Data Source Name field, select Oracle from the drop-down. In the table name field, select scott.patient underscore record 3 from the drop down. This is the Oracle table that we will be using for the input of this job. Click OK to return to the data source window. Notice that the table we selected is now in the ODBC field along with the data source name, Oracle. Click OK to return to the data sources window. The tree in the Data Sources box on the left has the name of the table we just selected for the M file. Also, process is ODBC. Whenever using a database table for the M file or out file, process must be set to ODBC. We now need to define the fields or table columns. Since we did not previously do this, select Discover Metadata on the right to go to the Define DDF window. Type in patient underscore record 3 and workbench will add the .ddf. Select Next. Verify that the ODBC radio button is selected, that the Oracle is selected for connection profile, and Scott.patient record 3 is selected for the table name. Under the delimited field options, type in a comma for the separator and a double quote for the frame. Click Next to go to the Field Data Viewer and Editor screen. The top half displays a sample of the rows with the column names at the top of each column. The bottom half has columns that have the column name the cosort data type, the field position for the record, and the source type in the table. Click Finish to return to the Data Sources window. You will first have a pop-up where you click Yes if you want to copy the fields into the script. Click No so that a .ddf is created. This is so that I can use the .ddf in other job scripts in the future. In the Data Sources box on the left, you can see the specification file patient underscore record 3.ddf. The column names are listed when you expand the specification. 
Also, that specification file has been placed in the metadata directory of our project. Click Next to go to the Data Targets window. On the right, select Add Data Target to go to the Data Target window. Select the File Radio button and type in the name patient underscore record 3 underscore protected dot out. Click OK to return to the Data Targets window. On the right, click Target Field Layout to go to the Target Field Layout window. At the top half of the screen are the field or column definitions that we defined for the input source. The bottom half is for the field definitions for the output target. Initially, all the field definitions are copied from the source to the target. We can now remove fields and apply protection rules to the fields. First, let's remove the fields ID number and driving license. Click on each field, then right-click and select Remove. We want to mask all except the last four digits of the values for Credit Card 1 and Credit Card 2. Right-click on the Credit Card 1 field. Select Create Rule to bring up the new field Rule Wizard selection pop-up. Under the Protection Rules category, click on Masking Function. The Library Location box contains the name of the project for the rule library where we will save. There is a drop-down where we can pick any project contained in this workspace. We will save to our current project. The rule name box contains the name masking rule. We can put whatever name we want. Type in credit mask. Click next to go to the masking function window. We will use a predefined mask. Make sure that the Use Predefined Masks radio button is selected. In the Mask field drop-down, select Credit Card. Notice that the mask example shows that the last four digits will be displayed while the remainder of the digits from the field will display the asterisk. Click Finish to return to the Target Field Layout screen. Notice that in the Field column, the field designation has been changed to function replace cars and the field name has been changed to mask underscore credit underscore card one. Replace cars is the masking function being used to accomplish the masking. Now we want to define a mask for the credit card two field. We want to use the same rule that was used for credit card one. Right click on the credit card two field. Click on Browse Rule to display the field rule library. The library location box contains the name of the project where the library is located. The box below that contains the name of any protection rules that were previously defined for the project, and the Detail column contains the definition in the Field Shield scripting language that is used to apply th the protection. Click on Credit Card Mask. Click OK to return to the Target Field Layout screen. The line for the Field Credit Card 2 has been changed in the same way that the line for Credit Card 1 was changed. Now we want to encrypt the field SSN. Right-click on that field and then click on Create Rule. Under Protection Rules, click on Encryption or Decryption functions. The library location box will be the same as before and the rule name box will be filled with the name encryption rule. Click next to go to the encryption and decryption functions window. Select ENC underscore AES 256 from the list on the left. Type in the passphrase that you wish to use as a base for the encryption. In this case, EM underscore demo. You could also browse to a file that contains the passphrase or enter an environment variable. If no passphrase is entered, then an internal one is used. Click Finish to return to the Target Field Layout screen. 
In the field column, the field designation has been changed to function ENC underscore AES 256. And the field name has been changed to ENC underscore AES 256 underscore SSN. Because we removed some of the fields, the field positions need to be adjusted. This is done by clicking on Reposition Fields icon immediately below the tab for the target to make the field numbers sequential. Click OK to return to the Data Targets window where the tree in the Targets box contains the fields that were defined. Click Finish. The job script, fs underscore mask underscore encrypt dot fcl, has now been created and placed in the project and is also displayed on the screen. It contains the field shield commands that we created using the field shield new protection job wizard. Notice that the in file references an oracle table and the output references a flat file. The input field definitions are not displayed but are contained in the patient underscore record 3.ddf file. The output fields contain the field definitions for the fields that were copied from input to output. The fields that had protection functions applied have the new field names with the syntax for applying the protection functions. When we defined the protection functions, they were placed in the library named irilibrary.fieldrules, which is in our project named fieldshield underscore mask underscore encrypt. Double click on that file so that it is displayed on the screen. When you expand the field rule library, you see the two rules that were created for this job script. They are named credit mask and encryption rule. By expanding each of these, you can see how they are defined. Click on field rule credit mask. In the properties tab at the bottom of the screen, you see the name and description box for that rule. Click on Field Rule Property Expression. In the Properties tab, Value contains the syntax for the expression used in the script to apply the rule. Click on Field Rule Property Name. The value shows how the field name is created for the field in the job script where the rule is applied. The rules have already been applied to the fields in the script. Therefore, if we delete these rules, the job script will run as intended. For demonstration purposes, we will delete these rules. Click on the line that has Field Rule Credit Mask. Right click, select Delete. Now that rule is no longer in the library. Do the same for the Field Rule Encryption Rule. Click on the tab for fs underscore mask underscore encrypt.fcl. Run the script by right-clicking in the script and selecting Run As IRI Job. You'll get a pop-up to save the changes that we did to the library. Select Yes. Or you could click Run the green circled arrow in the top menu bar. The output file patient underscore underscore encrypted dot out will appear in the project. Double-click on that file to display it. You can see that the protections have been applied. Here are the masked credit cards. And here is the encrypted SSN field. Thank you for watching the data masking and encryption demonstration. For more information, visit us on the web at www.iri.com.